Hi there, I'd just like to do a very brief review of this base, um, the Squira Vintage Modified uh, Short Scale. It was the first base I bought for about four or five years ago. Uh, I played guitar or played guitar at a church and someone said, can I play bass? And I said, no, for two reasons. One, I don't have a bass and two, I don't have a bass. But these are on offer. I was on business in Manchester. They were £217, I think, which was a pretty good price for what it is. As soon as I bought it, they came down to 178, 187 pounds, which is quite incredible uh, for this quality of this instrument. It, as I said, it's a vintage modified Jaguar short scale. So the distance between this nut and the uh, intonation points is 30 inches. So, you know, a standard guitar is what, 25 and a half maybe. So it's a little bit of a stretch, but not as much. Um, and it really is a, a very good entry level guitar. What sort of things did I need to do to it? Uh, realistically, nothing, but I followed one of Dave, Dave's Wells of Fun Stuff videos on this specific bass. And what I would say is the stock strings that come with it, the, the Fender strings are pretty good. I'm, I'm okay with those. But what Dave did was he put these ones on, and these are really, really nice strings. I think they're slightly uh, thicker than the other ones, and the short scale has a slight problem with tension, but this is beautiful feeling um, the neck is quite thin so it's fairly easy to move up it's a satin finish I actually quite like gloss but this feels good um, what were the biggest problems well ironically the it's not the tuners themselves I mean there are the 18 gears or 18 teeth in the in the gear here per circle and that's pretty uh, good uh, tuning ratio the biggest problem I had is that the bag I bought with it here it is is only just about the size of the base so when you put it away you tend to knock these tuning pegs and all of a sudden you know you've got to spend half an hour tuning up and i always faced a real problem when i tuned up and i'll describe it in, in a minute in more detail but i could never quite get these first threats quite good and the intonation was a little bit out so if you follow what dave says he'll show you how to adjust these um uh, screws back here you use i don't have a peterson i use a standard korg type tuner so you tune it open string to e and then you're looking for a, 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 a octave e up here and, and you know it should be in tune and you adjust it accordingly um so what i did as well the frets were pretty good but i followed one of daryl braun's tips where you get some sort of sanding block a bit of sanding paper at a sort of 45 degree angle you gently come down here uh, it doesn't have to be hard it's just gentle and you're just rounding off the edge and taking the edges off the the frets and a little bit of a file will allow you to clear the edge bits off and you get no sort of sharp edges per se um the other thing i found to be a real problem was this nut at the beginning here even for the stock strings was just not correct um i don't really know why they did that but um if we turn it up here a minute So I followed Dave's tips here, and now this is at the, the correct height, or the good height, uh, with the feeler gauge in the distance here. Um, before it was way too high, so just pushing down, this, this E should go to an F, but it was going more like to F sharp. It was that bad, and, and same went up here. The G was the, the G sharp A flat was going to, to an A almost, and you know, I got some really funny looks from my fellow musicians. What's wrong with this guy? He can't play. It's like, well, that might be true. But in this case, I'm fretting the correct um, note. It's just coming out wrong. And it was quite quite an eye-opener to realise how much effect this nut had on the, on the tuning. Uh, but again, once you get it tuned up, you can get it pretty close. Um, and... You know, you only got the 20 frets on here. Most of the other bases I've got, I've got 24. Uh, but it, but it's quite, quite good. It's quite a versatile instrument. In terms of out of the box, let's put the tone all the way up and let's turn up the P bass. The P bass on this is monster. It's killer. So it's really, you know, rattly. And on a big subwoofer, you can get a decent noise.
there's a fair amount of sustain. I mean, people talk about high mass bridges, etc., particularly on ordinary guitars. And my experience with the basses is there's so much energy in these strings when you hit them that, that this bass is pretty good. The, the equipment level is pretty good. This P bass is lovely because it's got the reverse wound two sets of pickups together. You have no problems with noise. So as I move around, you can't hear any appreciable increase and I'm in a very noisy environment here garages fluorescent lights whatever I did shield it because without shielding there was even more noise but let's look at what I did next the standard P uh, jazz bass on the back of this is really in my opinion fairly rubbish it's about four kilo ohms output this is about seven and a bit so it's really weak in comparison and you see a lot of people talking about this on the internet and I, I wasn't au fait with what that meant but audibly it meant it was very very quiet the other thing and you'll hear it on this replacement pickup is it it can be quite noisy but i'll show you what you can do about that uh, i used an ironstone pickup i really like the pickups that andy partridge does um there i had them on my telecaster they sound killer they're very reasonable value please look at them the biggest problem i had is that the jazz bass interface on the back here was different uh, from the one that the Tony has and Tony's is standard because I've since had a an SX jazz bass and Tony's pickups would have fitted that without any problems so I think for some manufacturers they make them slightly different I don't know why so what I did because I wasn't too worried about this bass was I made a sort of wooden template here I put a standard uh, pickup screw through it and I was able to screw it in position and use this cut away to guide a dremel like tool and then i could turn it round and then flip it upside down yeah and so this gave me the ability to do it if we get in quite close you can see it's not bad i mean there's all i've done is really wide out the arches a little bit here uh, there's a little bit of damage on one side up here that's nothing to do with the dremel tool so if you're careful the dremel tool won't flake off the problem there was before i went down the route of putting a new pickup on it i tried this technique where you put them uh molybdium magnets on the top and underneath and you're supposed to punch out the the pole pieces slowly and put them on i found it didn't make that much difference it just wanted to pull the strings in more and then i damaged the pickup and i thought okay let's just get an iron stone and so if we turn this thing up what you'll hear as i move around is different amounts of hum coming in but that's not necessarily the fault of the pickup the pickup's doing its job it's just the case that if I hadn't had the shielding in here, I'd get even more noise from the fluorescent lights. Um, so that's removed that, and we, we have no problem with touching the bridge, making any difference here. So the shielding is good, but the pick, single coil pickups, by definition, pick up electromagnetic uh, radiation coming in. That's what they're meant to do. Um, so if you don't have some hum cancelling in it, then you have to be careful the orientation you are from the amp. Uh, so that you lower the amount of lines that are crossing it. Ideally, you want to be at a right angle so you get a null cancelling out. And the problem I get in the church is that this will pick up the hearing loop and people insist on putting the music down the hearing loop, which means I start feeding back if I'm not careful. But the pickup on here has got a beautiful tone to it. It's really... Uh, turn, turn the tone down. So, I really like Tony's pickups. It's really uh, got a great sound, in my opinion. Uh, much more output than the original. I mean, it's 7.1 kilo ohms on my one. Your may vary. Um, well worth adding a different pickup, even if you don't use Tony's onto the back of these, because the jazz bass is very disappointing without it. Um, these things are, are neck heavy, so you need a strap. You can't easily put it on your lap. I mean, you can, but you'll, you'll be fighting it. Um, the short scale is really good if you're first learning to play from a standard guitar, because here I'm just horizontal and I can reach the four frets, so to speak. Yeah. Um, one of the tips that I learned from watching Billy the Kid, Billy the Kid on the on the internet was he just turns his hand a little bit like this and all of a sudden he can reach further and that's a really neat tip um, if you've never tried that um, but the the 
fret is fast it's, it's pretty good I mean even up here it doesn't sound too bad so you can you can bend the thing it's not too not too bad um, and yeah I mean it, it, it's even down here the The, the, you know, the differential of the tone is not too bad, it's not muddy. Uh, some basses down this level are a bit muddy. But I, I really like this bass. I, I admit that when I first got it, of course it's my only bass, so of course I like it. Then I got other basses, if you see my other videos, the Black Fretless FL uh, Harley Benton is just an amazing bass to play. Um, and I went off this a little bit, but once I followed Dave's tips and set it up correctly, or, or better as I might say, then I, I, I like this again and there's a couple of pieces we play where a smaller scale is just slightly better for the faster faster stuff so you know and particularly now I've got a handle on this uh, jazz bass so I can use the jazz bass pickup uh, even on high tone just a case of mixing it in properly then that makes the guitar more versatile but of course the P bass is killer that rattling my little um, man cave here so and on a big amp it, it's really good so yeah I if you've ever seen one of these I think they're pretty good value for money um, these people that know about them seem to keep hold of them people that don't know about them seem to sell them fairly cheap and if you like a small scale guitar you could use it like a travel guitar or I have my Steinberger for that then you know you could get a bargain and they're really well made and, and, and I think they're crafted in Indonesia and pretty good bases in my opinion so have fun and take care bye